And okay. Richard, what do we mean with interactive jobs? Yeah, so on the cluster, there's two main types of jobs you can run. So let's say you go to a restaurant. You can go, you can tell the host, I would like to have this kind of table. And you can sit there waiting in the queue. Or you can go walk around, do something else, and come back when your table's ready. So this isn't actually perfect because the better metaphor would be coming back once your food is already eaten, which doesn't make sense in that metaphor, but it's the general idea here. So with interactive jobs, we say we'd like these resources and you wait until they're there and then you can do something yourself. So it requires your time and mental effort. What we'll do next is called batch jobs where we say we'd like to do this and then it's submitted and then you come back when it's all done. So we start with interactive jobs because it's easy to understand, it's easy to see what happens and then we can also then we can get familiar with making these different resource requests and so on. So okay. Yeah. Um was that a good Should explanation? Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll yeah, actually so, do so, it. Yeah, let's let's do it. So let's look at the following command here. I will make this a bit yeah. smaller. This so, okay, so where are we now? So you can try to follow along and type with us also. Also, we will give you time. Like we're going to go through some things and you'll have a nice long exercise break where you can try yourself. So if you can't follow as we're typing now, don't worry. There's time later. Mm. And assume... about the setup here, yeah. uh, on that window here, I will be typing some commands and Richard will explain them. And on the bottom here, you can see the history of the commands. Yeah. And so we assume that you already can connect to the cluster by SSH or on demand or something and get a terminal. This is what we demonstrated yesterday and should have been the homework for today. If you can't already get a terminal that looks like this and type commands, then you're a bit behind and then that's okay. You can watch what we're doing and try to catch up later during the break. So Simo is there. He has cloned the HPC examples repository using the Git version control system, which is, by the way, a good way of transferring code to the cluster in general. And then has changed into the directory and then is running Python 3 slurm, slurm.py with 1000. So what does this program do? So this program uh, does like this kind of like a, like this is like a, a common example in like if you do Monte Carlo simulations, like this example where we estimate pi by throwing dart at a dartboard. And because dart, dartboard is a circle, and if we take random numbers from zero to one, like mm -hmm. either square, we can basically estimate the pi of mm -hmm. by the ratio of how yeah. many darts fit the, hit the dartboard. So this is like a small example code that just does something. Yeah. Um, and we use it for many examples. Yeah. Yeah. So where okay. did this code now run, Richard? Well, we haven't, I don't see anything that looks like it's requesting resources. So this must have just run on the login node, I guess. Like we didn't give any instructions to the host saying what we wanted. So let's, so, should we do the interactive uh, yeah. request then? So let's request from Slurm some resources. So srun is the program to use for it. The memory option says we need 100 megabytes of memory, which by the way is very small. It, we need 10 minutes of time, which is way too much. And then we give all the normal options we would give on the command line. So the program to run, which is Python, the program, which is Py, and 10,000 iterations. So what do I see here? It says s run, slurm job submit, automatically setting partitions. Is this in the background telling it where it's running somehow? 
Yeah, so on the on our cluster, it might be different in your cluster, but on our cluster, like the different kinds of hardware that we have is separated into these set different partitions. Because like if somebody wants to run on a specific hardware, mm -hmm. uh, they might want to run only on a specific partition. But if the user doesn't specify what hardware they want to use, there's this automatic script that basically use a sensible default yeah in your cluster okay. if you're in a different cluster you might need to specify this dash dash partition flag mm -hmm. uh, or mm -hmm. like this and in in some sites you might also need to specify an account that you want to use okay. so there yeah. might be different projects or something that uh that you want to like uh specify that okay like use this uh, uh use this account for the for the billing of the job, basically, we'll talk about the billing in a in a second. But in our cluster, these are set basically automatically, so you don't necessarily need to yeah. do them. But let's say you run it on a like a CSC, CSC machine, you might need mm -hmm. to set this. Yeah. But what happened afterwards? So then Richard. we see s run job ID, this queued and waiting for resources, job allocated resources, calculating pi. So that's the standard output. So, mm -hmm. yeah, basically it's telling us it got the resources and then it ran. And I guess it ran on some other computer somewhere. Yes. Uh, while it was running, we could have tried to see what, uh, what was happening in the queue, like how it, it was doing in the queue. Mm -hmm. uh, you can either use this SQ command or this slurm queue to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's so fast to, to go through the queue, uh, we, it's very hard to capture this So uh, for this specific program. But if you have a program in the queue, you can use this to, to check the, yeah. um, the queue status. We'll talk about this more in the monitoring part. But, yeah. but yes, you can uh, yeah. do this. OK. Maybe we can go on and let people explore yes. this more themselves. Yeah. To to verify, this is a good example that if if we would, uh, if we uh, just run like a command like hostname, which tells us which host we are in, we can show that like if we run just hostname, we so see see that we are actually in the login for because like in the output we didn't necessarily see that we were in a different place where we were running. But if we run s run hostname, now it just uses some default values for mm -hmm. time and memory. Mm -hmm. uh, but usually we don't want to use the defaults because like they yeah. are not set by us. But in this case, yeah. let's just run it. Uh, it's running, yeah. waiting for resources, and it has been allocated some compute node. So we know that, OK, this command actually run in some different system. Mm -hmm. There's a request in the notes. Can we show an S run with huge resource request and show the show it waiting mm -hmm. in the queue? Yes. Um, sure. So, what is That's big? Just... We say two hundred like... gigabytes of memory. Yeah. And then. Uh... Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it okay. it still runs <laughs> quite quickly because, like, yeah, yeah there's like. Uh, it, it Slurm can arrange for that. But let's say we ask for 200 terabytes of memory. Oh, uh, it now it say. says that there's no such node. <laughs> we don't have a computer that has uh, 200 gigabytes yeah. uh, memory. So, so Could yeah, we like... request 200 gigabytes of memory, 50 processors, and say one day of time? Yeah, let's... Is that well, huge? Well, let's, let's just... Uh, let's not do that processors let's just say that for like four four days of time so mm -hmm. so this so this is the day soon yeah. okay we still and it still got, ran uh, immediately uh so this yeah, is there what... seems to be like a node okay let's put the cpu uh yeah okay now it's okay <laughs> it's still deep. so yeah. this is okay but there, there's this... free free resource yeah for you to take so, so part of the reason why it's running so fast is that Simo hasn't run much lately. Mm -hmm. And the less you run, the higher your priority is. So mm -hmm. basically, Simo hops to the front of the queue and gets anything mm -hmm. immediately. And, 
and this is also like one of one of the situations that can happen with like if you are doing dealing with interactive jobs like if we yeah. think about the restaurant metaphor if we go to a it's like an empty restaurant we can basically choose which table we want to eat anyway right mm -hmm. like we can pick the biggest table it doesn't really matter if the, te the restaurant is empty like mm -hmm. if there is enough sp free space then like the the queue manager can yeah, basically like... fill our strange mm -hmm. requests mm -hmm. but but if if the place is full it might be that it's which suddenly need to wait a lot. Yeah. So let's show the interactive shell and the s interactive command yes. quickly. So what we did here is we ran a command line program on a node, but we can also request it to run just a normal shell and then we see things. So here we're making the standard resource request. This time we've told it the interactive partition. And we get this. So now we see. This is because of the recording thing. Don't worry mm -hmm. about that. Like uh, recording the okay. the history. Yeah. Yeah. But we see here, if you read this last line, it looks different. It says Simo's username and then PE22. And PE22 is the name of one of these compute nodes that's available. So now CMOS waited once and can run things multiple times, like yeah. this host named command and yeah. other things. Yeah. 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 And okay. if I exit, then yeah. yeah. I don't know why that history doesn't work. I have an idea, but let's worry about it okay. later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So yeah, this is like if you want to run multiple commands, uh, yeah. like you can use this if you want to it's temporarily get like if let's say you want to do like a big in installation or something, and the login node doesn't have the resources uh, to do that. Like there was a question there in the uh, in the notes about like if you're doing like a big build on your laptop, uh, like it might require lots of resources, like. Mm -hmm. That might happen also in the cluster. You so you might want to get like temporarily lots of resources. But do note that these because these are interactive resources, when you're not using them, they're basically still reserved for you. So mm -hmm. you're reserving resources. So if you're yeah. not using them, it's a good idea to usually like give them away so that other people can use them instead. Yeah. And this other command S interactive, is it even still installed? Did we install yeah, it on the installed. new cluster? Okay. Yeah. So this is pretty similar to the S run one, but it gives you, um, it sets some other defaults and can allow graphical programs to run. But now we would recommend doing graphical things with open on demand. So wouldn't really recommend mm. this, I guess. Yeah. But if, if you have a need to do it, then yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So. So the error is probably because of the uh, the recording script that I'm using. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, should we go on and yeah. do we need to talk I'll about quick... checking the jobs? So we can see the yeah, history. I'll quickly mention that if we want to see what jo jobs we had previously run, you can mm. use the slurm history command. Uh, I will make the terminal a bit smaller so that I complete it and it it will show me the uh, show me the uh, history of all of the jobs that I had previously run for example mm -hmm. interactive jobs and that sort of stuff we'll talk yeah. about this more about when we talk about yeah. monitoring jobs but okay but it is uh, possible to see yeah. the history so but but you let's scroll down yeah should yeah. we We've got these exercises here. So we'll yeah. give you some time to explore this yourself and ask questions. Um, there are how many different things you can try? I count five of them. Mm. Um, and you can also try the other things we've demonstrated above here. Uh, give it a try, see how it adapts to your own clusters. Yes. Read some more things. Um, yeah. I will switch to the notes here. And I see that there's many different questions here and they've been being answered. So do keep um, 
keep asking. Is there anything we want to talk about now? Um, I think most people can probably uh, the Jupiter terminal does work, yes. MATLAB. Maybe we'll talk about MATLAB a bit later. Someone can answer some default. Yeah, okay. I'd say let's go on to the exercises. How long should people have? Um, should we have uh, uh, maybe five to... Uh, yeah, maybe five to, yeah. and then yeah, five to we can do a brief wrap up and then have a break. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. See yep. you then. Yep. Do keep asking questions and respond your with your progress to our poll there. See you later. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Also, I will mention that that this goes into the next subject subject that we are going to be talking about like like uh there's also a question of uh can you attach to already existing job and that's also and it goes to what we're go next going to be talking about is these non-interactive jobs so in many cases like the interactive is is fine if you are actually watching like i i my personal approach is that if i'm if i'm not watching the actual screen i'm not using interactive jobs uh, yeah <laughs> like okay. if i'm not actually uh, if i'm not actually using I, uh I if, really, like yeah humanly watching it, it i'm not using interactive yeah. jobs because why yeah i'm not interacting so, with it so. i realized i forgot to turn on my audio when coming back on stream but anyway we're back oh, okay. so yeah um what did i say that if you want us to do a demo of one of the exercises, uh, put put a vote to the uh, yeah. exercises. Please vote down here. Um, what else did I say? Um, if you do, you need to close jobs when they're completed, and that is yes. If you don't close one of the ones that gives you a shell, then the resource will stay reserved for you. Hmm. Uh... So there was an, at least one vote for exercise one, so we can do a quick demo yeah. of that. Okay. So let's I'll... let's do the most simple one over okay. here. I'm heading to CMO screen. Yes. So. So in this exercise, we have the uh, we run this uh, memory use script that uh, uses memory, and then we uh, we want want to see what happens like when we increase the memory requirement and with various memory requirements. So let's try first uh, just running with just s run and no any uh requirements specified uh, any specific requirements so let's just try running this and see what happens so you can see here uh yeah maybe i typed it too fast uh okay. so i i wrote s run and just what i want to run so just add the s run that's usually the <laughs> that's this one mm -hmm. handy handy trick that you can use just add the s run if you don't yeah. know what happens Mm -hmm. And it was using uh, trying to use fifty megabytes of memory, and it yeah and allocated it up to that point. It worked. Yeah. So okay. let's add an actual memory requirement here. So I press the up arrow to get the previous command, and now I will uh, request five hundred megabytes. And because it's less than the fifty, it still worked quite yeah. well okay mm -hmm. but now let's do the c part where we try to increase the uh memory limit so let's try we have the 500 over here yeah so let's try uh like 500 over here okay 
Ah. It, it's memory killed because yeah. it's actually probably using a bit more than the, the 500. Mm -hmm. So let's let's increase the memory limit a bit and let's see how so, much it actually used, even though it tried to use 500. Yeah. Let's see if 600 works. Okay, 600 works. So let's add the sleep parameter there to to check what was the actual memory usage. Mm. We, we can use slurm history to check the okay. memory usage. Yeah. Uh, but we you need to like slurm captures it only w once every sixty seconds or thirty seconds or something, mm -hmm. so uh, we need to let it run a bit longer. Yeah. Right. And and you notice here that like let's so, say I would be running like a long job. This would be really annoying to watch at the screen, uh, to to keep it open like the terminal open constantly. Mm -hmm. Or the connection open. So, in the next session, we'll talk about how you can avoid this kind of like situation where you have to like keep it open yeah. while it's running somewhere in the background. So, if the, this would last for let's say multiple hours, it would be really yeah. annoying to mm -hmm. watch at the screen and, and okay. let it wait. Uh, okay, there it's done. Yeah. Now we'll, I will. I'll make it a bit smaller. Hopefully you can still see the font. Yeah. So you notice here, there is some overhead in the code. So it okay. actually used 518 megabytes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I we'll guess talk this... about the memory usage and that sort of stuff uh, a bit more later. Yeah. And I guess this is basically how it goes when you don't know how much memory it uses. You try a few things yes. and you see what's happened, what happens, and yeah. then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should we go to but, a break uh, now? Or yeah, I will quickly say that the, about the interactive stuff. Like the most important thing to remember is basically this diagram at the top of the uh, documentation here. That when you are using S Run or S Interactive, you're no longer in the login node you're suddenly over here. So you're in the compute node. Mm. And that's the most important thing to remember that, okay, if I ask the queue system to place me somewhere, you end up into a different place. And that's mm -hmm. basically the most important thing to remember. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's... Great. Should we take a 10-minute break until... 10-minute break until 13 past? Yeah. Okay. Great, see you later.